Okay, welcome back to Lockdown Electronics. Uh, today I'm going to do a little bit of a mini review of my analogue oscilloscope, which is the Hameg HM307 you can see here. And I'm going to take a look at the features, uh, the particular example that I've uh, managed to get hold of, and uh, some of its uh, capabilities. In particular, it has a built in curve tracer, and one of the reasons for wanting a uh, a cheapish analog oscilloscope was that I was going to build a curve tracer and uh, fit it inside however this came with one built in so the opportunity seemed a little bit too good to miss as to be honest it's um, uh, going to be far better Im implemented than anything I could build. Uh, we'll also have a look at the, um, the bandwidth or what I think the bandwidth is and just have a general look around at what has turned out to be quite a nice acquisition from eBay. OK, so here is the Hamig HM307 oscilloscope and uh, just to talk you through a few of the, the things on the, on the front panel and give you an idea of, uh, of what it's capable of. So actually quite a nice um, tidy example of an oscilloscope. Uh, if you look on the radiomuseum.org uh, it gives a possible uh, year of manufacture of about 1979 so it's certainly late 70s early 80s so the old girl's about 40 and she's in nice condition for 40 years really so I've been fortunate to pick up a very clean example off eBay actually came all the way from uh, from France um, so all I've done is uh, taken the European plug off and put a, a UK plug on and give you a bit of a clean up and uh, actually um, it's a nice bit of kit. As you can see, it's just displaying a sawtooth wave here from uh, from my signal generator. So, what have we got? So we've got obviously on off and intensity there, and so we can adjust the intensity of the trace. That's the focus knob uh, here. It's a single channel scope, um, and here we've got the AC DC coupling. This is the uh, volts per division. Uh, this allows us to adjust the position in the Y, the Y position of the waveform. This allows us to position the waveform from an X point of view. Um, we can actually come off the variable time base if we want to and we can extend it there to obviously it ceases to be calibrated with the uh, time per division at that point, but if we come back to the click stop at the end there, it's back to its conventional size. Um, down here we've got the uh, allows us to reverse the polarity of this display, plus or minus. We've got op uh, option to have an external trigger and this allows us, it says horizontal external in there, that actually allows us to enable XY mode, so if you want to display some lesser JS patterns we can feed um, X and Y in, uh, enable that and we, we can get the scope to, to display um, that in that mode. Um, this is the trigger level and that's automatic triggering if, and we can then turn up and adjust where the trigger occurs. You can see it's occurring at various positions up the ramp there as I adjust it normally works perfectly well in the automatic trigger position and of course you've got the conventional time based control. Nice portable job, it's completely um, solid state inside, transistors and there's one or two integrated circuits with of course the exception of the cathode ray tube which obviously uh, is the only uh, thermionic valve that's in there. So a nice little example, I'm rather pleased with it. Um, and it's, uh, it seems to be working very well, very reliably. And as I say, when I got it apart and had a good look inside, it was very clean and really uh, nothing to grumble about. And if I pop the external signal off and just put an external, uh, an all conventional probe on, um, as you can see, it'll go slightly crazy with the mains. So now we'll clip it onto the, the calibrator, we'll slow down the time base there and get it to display and there you are you can see it's um, displaying the the calibration signal um, which is uh, 0.2 volts and uh, let's go to 0.2 volts there we go so that's 0.2 volts per division so if we just the Y position you can see that one division there is indeed um, 
0.2 volts according to the, the calibrator. So, um, nice little scope and I'm rather pleased with it. Okay, so now I've got the scope attached to the signal generator and currently it's displaying a signal of 2 MHz which is well within the, the scope's capabilities and I've adjusted the output voltage of the signal generator so that we're exactly 60 visions across the whole screen or plus or minus 3 if you like and to identify the minus 3 dB point uh, we're looking for point 0.7 well point 0.707 to be precise um, obviously don't have that level of detail on here but um, 66 or 0.66 is roughly two divisions so if I advance the frequency now until the waveform is just above that second division there uh, that gives us a rough idea of, uh, of where the 3 dB point is so I'm going to start doing that now so I'm now increasing the frequency as you can see uh, we've just passed 5 megahertz there and it's starting to drop uh, just past 7 megahertz and okay I'm going to stop about there just above the, the the second division and that's saying 9 megahertz um, so give you some idea that uh, we're still quite a way off the, the quoted 15 megahertz what I'm going to do now though is continue on up to 15 megahertz and just uh, show you exactly what the scope looks like at 15 megahertz. There we go, that's 15 megahertz. So the waveform still clearly visible, and you could certainly take a measurement of it, but obviously the voltage is now considerably less because we know the signal generator output is in fact still would still be three divisions of the screen were the uh, scope. Um, scope's rise time able to keep up with the, the incoming waveform. So there you go, hope that makes some sense. Okay so one of the reasons uh, I said earlier in the introduction that I was particularly interested in getting hold of this particular instrument was the fact that it already has a curve tracer built in and that was the thing I was hoping to add to a to cheap and cheerful analog scope um, if I could get hold of one. So to enable the curve tracer first of all we need to put two banana plug style test leads into these sockets here press the GD button to enable the curve tracer and the first thing to note is that the display initially just looks like a conventional oscilloscope sweep with no input signal it's a straight line however if I take these probe leads and short them out you'll see the the effect is very different to a normal trace so shorted out we get that vertical line so that's a dead short and that's open circuit and if we now look at some components I'm going to put a, a 100 ohm resistor in circuit here and we get that characteristic sloping line as the resistance increases so the slope of that line increases and if we now go to 10k uh, you can see the slope of the line is much steeper in fact it's only slightly off the horizontal but as you can see if I take it in and out of circuit there it does nonetheless show you a slope so resistance gives you a straight line that's sloping capacitance depending on the value gives a slightly more interesting display. This is a one microfarad electrolytic and you get that characteristic elliptic display. And if I now move up in value to a 47 microfarad electrolytic, still got that ellipse but this time um, it's quite a different shape. So the higher the capacitance the uh, the difference in the shape and the position of the of the elliptical the curve. Okay on to a couple of semiconductors and first of all got a conventional uh, small signal diode and as you can see there slightly to the left of the center line we've got the point at which we pass the uh, threshold voltage and the diode begins to conduct and you're actually seeing um, how the diode actually works there so reverse biased obviously nothing but as we forward bias the diode and the junction begins to conduct you can see the knee just there where conduction begins. Now if I now go to a slightly more specialised type of diode, a Zener, um, and I'm going to connect it up in exactly the same way. First thing to note is, still got that same knee in exactly the same position, however across here now we've got another knee going up, and that's the point at which the 
don't if I could hold it properly so it actually made a connection let's just try again there we go that's the point at which the diode uh, voltage um, is, uh, is specified in this case it's 4.7 volts so Zener diode a very um, specific type of trace okay that's the curve tracer um, I hope it makes some sense and it's quite handy for making component checks in circuit as quite often um, you're able to get a pretty good idea of uh, what you're checking while it's still in circuit. OK, well that's it now for the HM307 uh, Hamega oscilloscope review. So I hope you found it useful and you've been able to understand some of the capabilities of the instrument. Um, I certainly enjoy using it and it's been a great learning tool. Um, it forces you to really think about um, how you set the instrument up, whereas the digital scope up here behind me, great instrument, uh, but you just press auto set and it's all too easy. So it's actually uh, a great learning tool with with the old-fashioned analog way. Um, okay, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please click that like, um, thumbs up below, um, and consider subscribing. That'd help me too. And thanks very much. And we'll see you in the next video.